So tonight we're going to be talking about Townsfolk Tussle, Kingdom Death Monster Light, or Kingdom Death Monster Ripoff, or a clever twist on it that you should check out. Let's take a deeper dive at Townsfolk Tussle on Luge of Games, and I'm Chris. Here we go. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Townsfolk Tussle, let's take a step back for a minute and let's talk about the predecessor, the monster, excuse the pun, in the room already, and that is Kingdom Death Monster. If you're not familiar, this was one of the original uh, pipe dream projects on Kickstarter in terms of crowdfunding, uh, and it was years late delivering, and Poots, as he is known by, as the designer, creator, um, has had a long following in terms of the miniature realm for quite some time prior to that, but he decided to dive headfirst, metaphorically speaking, almost literally at times it seems like, into that realm of board game development, tabletop game development, and not into one of the typical genres, but more of the dungeon crawl-esque. And Kingdom Death, um, there's plenty that has been said about it out there, and so I won't rehash a lot of that, but it is a dystopian nightmare encapsulated game where you are survivors on the brink of death at all times, whether it's from events in your self-built civilization slash city, or whether you're going out and fighting the monsters who are actively trying to destroy you. And what made it so innovative is because it did not have a lot of the typical dungeon-esque crawl aspects to it, where you were moving throughout the dungeon battling monsters along your way. It's got a hunt phase and it's got a battle phase. And the biggest problem is the price point and the ability to get it to the table. What Townsfolk Tussle is trying to do is they are trying to take the main attraction of Kingdom Death Monster being the boss battles, isolate that, focus on it, tweak it, and then present it to the masses, if you will. Because KDM, that is what it's best known for, is the innovative mechanisms, how the boss and the monsters and the AI move throughout combat, and being how brutal it is. Now, Townsfolk Tussle, pull up the page here, so here we are on the Kickstarter page, Townsfolk Tussle. Currently at about a third of a million dollars with 15 days, just over two weeks to go, almost 5,000 backers. Now the interesting thing to note is that unlike uh, some of the other games on Kickstarter right now, this actually comes in comparably with the number of total backers uh, with similar games. And why is that then that it's at such a lower pledging and total funding level right now? And I think that's twofold. One, the first reason is that the overall pledge level is a lot less. The overall average pledge level at the core of the game is only $85, which, as we'll talk about, you may look at as too much or too little, depending on how you view things at this point. I think the other reason that it's at this funding level is despite all of the induced hype that I saw on the social media sites and the social media crowd prior to this launch of the last week, prior to it actually finally beginning was the fact that this is a very unique theme. They have gone with sort of the 1920-ish, old school, pre-Mickey Mouse sort of cartoony feel. And I think a lot of people initially have dismissed it based on the artwork alone. Now, full, full disclaimer, full cards on the table, I don't like the artwork. I'm not a big fan of it. It does not entice me, it does not uh, enthrall me on that side of things. That being said, I'm not judging this book by its cover, and that's why the deeper dive is necessary on a game like this, especially when we're making comparisons to one of the highest rated tabletop games of all time in KDM. Now, in KDM's situation, we do have a very complicated game with very complicated systems and intricacies that is relatively easy to understand once you get into it, but getting into the table is often the biggest challenge along with the price point. And so what they have tried to do with this campaign in this game is basically, and this was where the KDM light is getting thrown around, is that they've tried to narrow the scope, narrow the degree of focus, and emphasize
emphasize and just focus on the main most interesting aspect of an in-depth monitor that people mention is the boss battles. And so what this is, is a two to five player cooperative game where you are battling just the bosses. Battling bosses, going to town and buying stuff. Battling bosses, going to town and buying stuff, etc. Now you have three mini bosses and you have the final boss. You win all four, you win the game. There's three possible endings. If you win, you lose, or if you win and you get the secret objective. Why is this different? Oh, is this different? Is this just uh, a reskinned version of KDM and they're infringing on you know the, the property and they're trying to just make a quick buck? Or is it something deeper? Right now, again, disclaimer, I'm backing for $85. Let me tell you why, let me tell you what makes this campaign a little bit different and whether or not you should be interested or not. First off, what it is, is you are the village people that are defending the town from ruffians who have come in, the sheriff has died, and you need to fend off with your fellow citizens, these guys that are coming in. Now, the base game is a bit of an interesting uh, situation. Now, I'm not a big fan of the art, like I said, but I think it plays its role because they have done a very thorough job of incorporating the theme from everything to the good guys, the bad guys, the cards, the wackiness of it. They have just embraced it. They have not sort of gone slapstick with it. They haven't sort of, um, you know, gone halfway with it or just tongue in cheek. They are going full bore with it and they are making it their theme and they are making it work right now. What you're getting is you're getting a miniature game that is tactical and strategic. And so that is what Kingdom Death Monster is in a nutshell with some, some of these boss battles. So what are you getting when it comes to this? I mean, you're getting the miniatures. Again, I mentioned the art, the miniatures. Again, I don't, don't really like them. I don't really think uh, they have any visual appeal, but they match what the company is going for in the first place. They match the other artwork. So I think the thematic consistency is more important than whether or not one is going to make me like them over the other. Now, as I've said previously, art can be a make it or break it on an initial impression. Initial impression, I think, has uh, sort of turned off a lot of people because I think if this was a sci-fi, fantasy, dark, deep, mysterious, whatever, you're going to attract that crowd because there's a specific crowd that will be enthralled and drawn in by that. And I think you could be probably at two, two and a half times your funding goal, even with the lower price point, if it had that theme. So I think it's ballsy that they have, or gutsy, if you will, that they've gone with this and they've stuck with it. They've stuck to their guns. So I think that deserves an applause in that sense. What are you getting? You're getting 10 bad guys. You're getting six good guys. Um, you're getting miniatures. You're getting a bunch of cards. The base pledge is $85 right now. We'll talk about the pledge levels in a minute. But in terms of what else are you getting? You're getting the boss battles. The one thing that KDM is really known for is the boss battles and how the AI interacts with the players, how the players have to use the knowledge of the AI, and especially when they don't know it the first to get destroyed. Now, the difficulty on that game versus the difficulty on this game, I don't think it's to that level. I think KDM is meant to be unforgiving. It's meant to be brutal. That is not this game, but this game is meant to allow you to be clever. It's allowing you to do things different than KDM where if you make a mistake, you are really, really, really going to pay for it and you may not be able to make up for it. Now, why does this differ? It differs because you're getting personal objectives that you can complete throughout the battles. You're also being able to interact with the terrain more, where terrain in KDM is very light. It's very present, but you don't always have use of it. And so this is where it's a little bit different, is that you can interact with it, you can use it to your advantage. The other difference is, unlike KDM, where the monsters themselves have a lot of variability within their moveset, the ruffians here have variability in what order you fight them. Meaning if you fight ruffian number A as <laughs> ruffian number A, if you fight ruffian John Wilkes Booth as ruffian number one, the first game that you play with people, he's going to do certain things. Now, if you fight him again in the second game that you play, but this time maybe he's villain or mini boss number two or three, he's going to do different things then. So it's a little different than KDM, where once you learn what some of the bosses do, once you learn how the lion or the 
antelope works, you can sort of game it. And that's what it wants you to do. Now, this is taking that to the next level. So it's going to require a little bit more gamesmanship in terms of where you fight him makes his AI slightly different. I was really impressed when I was looking at this, um, again, not because of uh, anything in particular with the page itself, but with the depth that they have gone into and the thought that they have put into this campaign already. And I think that shows from what's out there on the campaign page in terms of what's already being seen and being available to people willing to back, as well as the rule book, as well as the previews that are out there in terms of the videos. It's simple, it's straightforward, but there's enough strategy and enough tactics there within the gameplay that I'm intrigued by it already. I haven't watched any of the gameplay videos, but I have read the rules. And so again, I'm really impressed by the rule book here. The rule book is a lot more complete than I was expecting it to be. It's very easy to read through. It gives examples. It's very thorough in answering questions already that you can see that might come up just based on the explanations. So it's very good from that side of things. I was very impressed. I don't feel the need to necessarily watch a gameplay video just based off of reading the rule book. And that's not very common in the Kickstarter realm of things. Now, that being said, I mentioned videos and here you go. There are plenty of videos down here at the bottom. So you get to these videos and they got everybody. They got Quackalope, they got King of Average, they got Board Game Pro, they got One Stop Co-op Shop, they got Unfiltered, they got Hungry Gamer, they got everybody. So if you want that sort of thing, it's there. Now scrolling back up a minute, let's talk about stretch goals. Why are you gonna back this campaign? I mentioned the fact that they start off with six heroes and 10 bad guys. They've added at least one already new good guy hero. They've added two more ruffians to increase the variability. And if you're like a squeaky wheel, like some of these campaigns are with miniatures, they've already included standees so you can avoid the gray blobs of, of masses on your table if you want to from the get-go if you're not a painter like I am. So they're appeasing there. Now the interesting thing is they don't have a ton of stretch goals unlocked. You know, they've got about a dozen stretch goals unlocked right now. And I think that's worth noting because they have not gone hog wild in terms of the amount of stretch goals. Now, one thing that that tells me is that they are trying to keep it very paced and they are also trying to keep it within their limitations, meaning they're not adding so many stretch goals that they're not going to have the ability to balance these things or it's going to delay shipping. Shipping right now, the livery is already scheduled for almost a year out. And this is a game, again, with miniatures and molds and shipping from, you know, China or wherever. You're looking at probably the earliest, even though they say September 20th, and I think that's going to be generous just knowing how some of these miniature games go. Now, I like that, though. I, I, I think that's the big catch is are you getting enough with these stretch goals to back it now versus waiting? And for me right now, I think $85 going back to the pledge level is a good pledge level for what you're getting, for the amount of miniatures, the amount of stuff, and the amount of variability. Now, if we hit like, you know, um, you know, a dozen more stretch goals in the last 15 days, and you get two or three more ruffians and two more heroes and a bunch more abilities and cards and things like that, I think it's gonna be an even better price. Shipping is $20 to the USA. Take for what you will, that's probably about right. Um, you've got a couple other pledge levels. You're getting customized gear at this $300 level. And then the, the thing I just never understand is you're getting a little tombstone with your name on it in the game for an extra 65 bucks. Um, okay, great, sure, whatever. Now, the one thing that sort of left people and that I will complain about, and I'll, I'll bring it up as a complaint is, as I mentioned earlier, these guys have done their homework. This Kickstarter page is very complete. The rule book is very complete. They've done their homework on how to do a Kickstarter campaign. The problem I have right here with this $70 pledge level is I don't know if that was the thing that fell through the cracks that they did not account for, or it's just something that they thought they would just get away with. And I'm not sure which it is. There's been a backlash lately, especially within board games. And you see it a lot outside of the board game world on Kickstarter, but it's really gone away almost completely within the, the, the board game world of a limited number of early pledges. If anything, you're seeing it timed now, as opposed to we're only gonna get this many. And why am I so peeved is that this $15, again, $15, if $15 is going to make or break whether or not you're going to back a game, you probably weren't terribly interested in the first place and you were doing it for FOMO 
or to not miss out in terms of the hotness. So is that going to make or break my pledge? No. Does it peeve me? Absolutely. Because this is $15. You know, this is, you know, 20% essentially. And it's the cost of shipping. So, I mean, you're essentially, these guys are essentially getting free shipping is essentially what they're offering. This, uh, I can't tell if this was intentional or just complete lack of foresight, despite all of the foresight in the other areas. Because at least sometimes when you see this discounted pledge level, it at least is done for a reason or the number makes sense in terms of it gets it funded very quickly. Now, $70 for the 100 backers doesn't get them anywhere close to the funding level. So even the number of pledges at that level made no sense. So I'll leave it at that. There's plenty of stuff if you want to see it. It looks like it's actually on tabletop simulator, simulator so you can see what it actually plays like. There's plenty of gameplay videos. And that's the one thing I'll say is I like this because there's gameplay videos. It's not just purely unboxings or previews. Give me a gameplay video. Otherwise, all this other stuff is just paid advertisement. I want to see what it and how it actually plays like. The other thing I think that needs to be said about this is the Quackalope's quote right here sort of encapsulates it for me, is this is going to be a lot easier to get to the table than Kingdom Death Monster is. And you could also almost use it as a gateway to Kingdom Death Monster if you're trying to get your group into something like that. The other reason I think it's nice is because it scales. It scales from two to five. You're going to see differences in how the villains interact with two as opposed to three or four or five. So they've really put a lot of depth into that. They put a lot of depth into the terrain in terms of how you're going to be interacting with them and just even the, the shops and things like that. So it has enough basis of the KDM boss battles, but it's got enough to stand on its own to merit it not just being a reskin of the KDM boss battles in general. And I think in general, it's going to be easier to get to the table. One, because there appears, the setup appears to be very quick and very straightforward. Two, say what you will about the artwork. This is going to appeal a lot more to the general crowd than KDM is. KDM is very divisive in its artwork. Um, that's one of the biggest issues that is constantly brought up is just the gratuitousness of some of the art and some of the models. And this eliminates some of that. Now, for the blood on the, the, the box, I, I wish, you know, they'd get rid of that because, you know, that's a weird thing to explain to my kids if I want to try and play this with younger kids. But that being said, either way, it's going to be easier to get to the table than something like uh, KDM is regardless. So where does that leave me? Going back up to the top, I am pledging for $85 right now. There's just over two weeks left. How do I feel about things? I'm going to keep this pledge. I'm going to keep this pledge. I have gone back and forth prior to researching this and prior to doing this video and reading through the rule book, really breaking down what they are offering. I think this is a good value. I think um, especially if they unlock, you know, half a dozen to a dozen more stretch goals over the next two weeks, I think it's going to be an even better value. I like the fact that they are not bombarding me with expansion after expansion after expansion. So my $85 pledge is all of a sudden $185, and I'm having a fear of missing out on these additional guys or whatever that comes with it, like some other campaigns. So you're getting your money's worth in that sense, and I think this is something at the $85 pledge level with all the stretch goals included, that's going to easily retain its value. And so even if you get it and you hate it in that sense, you'll probably be able to flip it for at least your cost, depending on how many stretch goals get hit, probably a little bit more. So for me, I'm going to be keeping this after researching this. This pledge is going to stay. I'm going to see this one through. I'm going to keep it. It's going in my pre-order collection. So um, there you have it. Now, that being said, if you don't like these dungeon crawls, if you don't like that aspect of things, this tactical, this strategic miniature, um, you know, skirmish type battles, I don't also think that this one is going to change your mind. This is nothing that's going to uh, reveal a revelation to you in terms of getting you to be interested in it from that side of things. So this isn't one that is necessarily going to open your eyes to that genre. If you don't like this genre and don't think it's going to be for you, and I don't think it's going to change your mind, but I think it's worth looking at, and especially knowing how um, first impressions are. If you have been wavering or thinking about it at all, I think it's worth re-examining, looking at the rule book, or watching one of the gameplay videos to see if it fits what you're looking for. For me, I know that my game group is going to love this. I love it. Um, it fits what I'm looking for. 
fits something that I don't have. It fits being able to get to the table, and that's what I care about. And it fits price point wise comparatively. So for all those reasons, I'm going to be backing it. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you feel about things. Uh, this is just one of many things that's on Kickstarter right now. So um, <laughs> everything is fighting for your dollars nowadays, and it's not going to get any easier. It's just going to get harder and harder and harder. So um, it's nice to have a little bit of um, projects that really catch your eye that you can really grip onto and know that this is something for you and this is one for me. So um, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. As always, these are all of my own opinions, and no one's paid me or told me to say anything positive or negative. Uh, most of these guys don't even know I exist. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time. Stay classy.